In this video, I want to discuss the different types of vitamin C, like whole food, buffered, or liposomal, and find out which is best. If you've researched the topic even a little bit, you will find countless of different vitamin C products and formulations, each claiming to be better than the others. This obviously creates a lot of confusion and even arguments online. Let me help you see through the hype and look at the pros and cons of each type. In the following few minutes, I want to talk about the four main forms of vitamin C supplements that you will find at your local supplement store or online. They make up 95% of all vitamin C products. They are whole food vitamin C supplements, ascorbic acid, mineral ascorbates, also sometimes known as buffered vitamin C, and liposomal supplements. We will quickly also go over lesser known types like ascorbyl palmitate, which is fat soluble vitamin C, and vitamin C with bioflavonoids. But the focus of this video will be the four I just mentioned. To start off, let's first group them logically in their relationship to each other. Obviously, they are all vitamin C forms. But the first main distinction that we can make is between whole food vitamin C versus isolated or synthetic vitamin C. The first difference here is whether you're getting the vitamin C as part of a whole food or food extract, along with its cofactors and other nutrients that might be found in the food, or are you just getting the vitamin C by itself as an isolated nutrient. Whole food supplements obviously fall under the category of whole food vitamin C, whereas synthetic vitamin C makes up the rest of all the supplements. This can be plain ascorbic acid, it can be buffered vitamin C or liposomal vitamin C. All of them are based on isolated synthetic vitamin C compounds that were made in a lab. So the very first question you need to ask yourself before going out and buying a vitamin C product is whether you want whole food vitamin C or isolated synthetic vitamin C. Now, most people will probably say that they want natural vitamin C, but the answer to this question isn't actually that simple. And the reason for this is that technically vitamin C is defined as ascorbic acid. And the molecule, the ascorbic acid molecule, in natural food is the same exact molecule that you find in isolated products. To quote the Linus Pauling Institute, natural and synthetic ascorbic acid are chemically identical, and there are no known differences in their biological activity. That's why most textbooks out there would tell you that there's no difference in whether you take natural or synthetic vitamin C. And you will probably also get the same answer if you talk to your local doctor or pharmacist. That said, if you've already watched my other videos, you will probably know that I kind of disagree here. It's not necessarily about what is in a synthetic or a natural vitamin C product. They both contain ascorbic acid, the same molecule but it's about what the synthetic vitamin C product is lacking. In foods, ascorbic acid usually comes together with certain cofactors. For example, tyrosinase, which is a copper enzyme, bioflavonoids, and certain nutritional factors called P, J, and K. Nutritionists often debate how important these cofactors really are and if they really make a difference. I personally believe it depends on the circumstances. So let me now tell you the pros and cons of synthetic and the pros and cons of whole food vitamin C supplements so you get an idea when it's best to take one or the other. The main benefits of synthetic slash isolated vitamin C are that it's cheap, it's widely available, you can buy it at any supermarket and any pharmacy out there, and it can be super dosed because they often come in very high doses from 500 milligrams up to several thousand milligrams, depending on what type of product you buy. I will talk about if you should even superdose in the first place in a second. Now, the drawbacks of synthetic vitamin C are that they are often made from GMO corn, often contain unnecessary fillers. This isn't necessarily a vitamin C problem, but a low quality supplement problem. They can cause stomach upset because of their high dose and they can potentially deplete certain cofactors that I talked about before. For example, copper. Some nutritional protocols like the Walsh protocol or mineral balancing use this to help people with their copper toxicity. But you need to be careful because isolated vitamin C has been shown to lower ceruloplasmin, 
which is the main transport protein of copper. I will also explain this in more detail in a second. Now on to whole food vitamin C. Here the benefits are that it comes from whole foods, usually freeze-dried, for example acerola cherries or kamu kamu. Next, it also comes with vitamin cofactors that are naturally found in the foods that the supplements are derived from. Because concentrating a food into a supplement can only be done up to a point, whole food vitamin C supplements usually come in lower doses than synthetic vitamin C supplements. So instead of 500 or 1000 milligrams, you usually get only 200 milligrams per capsule. Whether you see this as a pro or con is up to you, but what we often notice is that people who have problems taking isolated vitamin C, for example from stomach upset, don't have this problem when they switch to a whole food vitamin C supplement. That's because of the lower dose and because it's closer to a natural food, so your body seems to have an easier time adjusting to it. In terms of drawbacks, whole food vitamin C products are usually more expensive because the process of making them is more expensive. And you also have the possibility of pesticide contamination. So you always want to choose a quality product that has been lab tested and is sold by a reputable brand. And lastly, it will be difficult to use this for super dosing vitamin C simply because you would have to take dozens of pills a day. Again, I will talk about super dosing in more detail in a second. Great, now that we talked about the pros and cons, the most important question is obviously, when do you use what? Now, despite what your textbook might say, synthetic and whole food vitamin C definitely behave differently in the body. What you need to understand is that all types of vitamin C stimulate the adrenal glands. That means it will give you a slight energy boost and it will also lead to more sodium retention in your body because the adrenal glands pump out aldosterone, a hormone that retains sodium. That's why most adrenal fatigue recovery protocols out there prescribe some form of vitamin C, often very high doses. But if you're very fatigued, they, these high doses can be too stimulating. In that case, I either recommend you stay away from vitamin C for a while or you go with a very low dose whole food vitamin C supplement. People with severe fatigue simply seem to do better on these because they're more gentle. The next thing you need to be aware of before deciding for a whole food or a synthetic vitamin C product is your copper status. Unfortunately, nowadays, copper overload is very common and I recorded an entire video on it. In general, all forms of vitamin C help with copper overload, but Synthetic vitamin C simply lowers copper in the body, whereas whole food vitamin C also makes it bioavailable. Well, the reason for this is ceruloplasmin, the copper transporting protein. Synthetic vitamin C uncouples copper from ceruloplasmin and therefore lowers it, whereas whole food vitamin C also provides tyrosinase, which the liver needs to build more ceruloplasmin. Because of this difference, ceruloplasmin protocols like the root cause protocol only prescribe whole food vitamin C. But if you already have good copper bioavailability and just want to lower copper, you can also use synthetic vitamin C. And you would see this through high copper blood tests, high copper ceruloplasmin, and high copper hair analysis. Now, of course, if you don't know your copper bioavailability, and want to be on the safe side, then it's probably best to go with whole food vitamin C. Lastly, let's talk about which to use acutely, for example, when you have the flu or a cold. I explain how to take vitamin C then in a different video in much more detail. There are quite a lot of protocols online telling you to use very high doses of vitamin C acutely in such a case. I'm personally not a big fan of superdosing vitamin C, because of the ceruloplasmin interaction I just talked about, but short term, so only for a couple of days, it probably won't do much harm and can definitely give symptomatic relief. Obviously, in such a case, you need to use synthetic vitamin C because, like I said before, you would have to take dozens of whole food capsules to do the job. Okay, now that you know the main differences between whole food and synthetic vitamin C products, Let's now only look at synthetic vitamin C products and talk about their different types. The three main types are plain ascorbic acid, buffered ascorbates, 
also known as mineral ascorbates and liposomal vitamin C. Now, of course, all of them share the characteristics of synthetic vitamin C that I talked about before. That's because all of them are based on isolated vitamin C, and the difference is in how they are packaged. Ascorbic acid is the simplest and cheapest form of the three. It's what you get when you buy vitamin C at the supermarket. Now, most supplement brands don't make their own ascorbic acid. So it's usually powder that they buy wholesale from chemical companies like BASF or Roche or from producers in China. And then they just bottle it up or encapsulate it in their own facility. If you can, I would stay away from Chinese products because they're the most unreliable ones, not necessarily because they don't contain ascorbic acid, but because they're often contaminated with pollutants or materials that were mixed up in the processing of the ascorbic acid. The benefits here are that it's super cheap, it's easy to get, and like I said before, ascorbic acid is the basis for all other synthetic vitamin C forms. It will do the job for most people who don't get side effects from it. Unfortunately, quite a few people do get side effects from it, which takes me to its cons. As the name suggests, it's very acidic, which means that if you take too much, you can get things like stomach upset and diarrhea. I will link a video of what happens when someone accidentally takes several thousands of milligrams of ascorbic acid at once. Next, we have buffered vitamin C, also known as mineral ascorbates. Here, the ascorbic acid is bound to an alkaline mineral to reduce its acidity. Basically, the mineral balances out the acid. That's why it's called buffered. Usually, the manufacturer will use calcium or sodium for this, but you can also sometimes see magnesium or another mineral for this. Generally, around 90% of the molecule will be vitamin C and around 10% the mineral. The benefit of this is very obvious. It's less acidic. So buffered vitamin C is very helpful for people with sensitive stomachs. The drawbacks are that it's more expensive than plain ascorbic acid, though less expensive than liposomal, which we'll talk about in a second. And also you have mineral interactions. For example, I always had problems taking calcium ascorbate because annoyingly I was low in magnesium. Increasing my calcium uptake through the calcium ascorbate made the magnesium deficiency worse. Lastly, and this might be my individual taste, magnesium ascorbate is kind of a scam because it's still pretty acidic if you ask me. Great, on to the last of the three major types of synthetic vitamin C, liposomal vitamin C. As the name suggests, here the vitamin C is wrapped in a liposome. Liposomes are cells made of an outer layer of fatty acids that are known as phospholipids. Phospholipids are usually made from lecithin and they wrap around the vitamin C to protect it. In theory, a wide range of nutrients can be wrapped within phospholipids, like glutathione, zinc, and other vitamins. And you will find these products online. They usually come in liquid form or gel capsules. The biggest benefit here is increased absorption because like I said before, the phospholipids protect the vitamin C from stomach acid. Also, liposomes can fuse with human cells, which makes it easier for the vitamin C to enter the cell. That means no more stomach upset and more vitamin C reaching the bloodstream and tissue. Now, some websites will throw around percentages like only 15% of ascorbic acid is absorbed versus 90% of liposomal vitamin C. But absorption is very individual, and these figures might just be the average of one study, but don't necessarily reflect what you will take in. It is true, though, that of all vitamin C forms, a liposomal has the highest absorption and is the most gentle on your stomach. Most forms of liposomal vitamin C are also buffered, so you're also getting the benefits of mineral ascorbates I just talked about. Now, of course, all of this comes with a price, literally. Liposomal vitamin C is the most expensive by far. I remember I used to pay around $25 for a 250 milliliter bottle, which were 25 daily dosages of 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Also, 
the liquid liposomal vitamin C is less convenient than powders or tablets. And the taste can be a problem for some people. I don't think it tastes horrible, but it definitely doesn't taste great. Before I wrap up this video, let me also talk about two more forms of vitamin C that you might encounter online. The first is vitamin C with bioflavonoids, which is really just a mix of ascorbic acid with certain bioflavonoids added to it. Now, the brands that sell this will cite studies where bioflavonoids enhanced vitamin C uptake. The problem, though, is that other brands that sell normal vitamin C without bioflavonoids will cite other studies where this wasn't the case. So the evidence is mixed. I personally believe that bioflavonoids probably do something for your vitamin C uptake, but at that point you might as well use whole food vitamin C where the bioflavonoids and the ascorbic acids are found in a natural balance. And lastly, ascorbyl palmitate is a fat-soluble form of vitamin C. It's usually used as an antioxidant to increase the shelf life of certain foods or skin creams. It can interact with lipid-based molecules similar to liposomal vitamin C. Well, there are fewer studies on it, and many of them say that much of the ascorbyl palmitate breaks down in the digestive tract, so only a small percentage actually makes it to your cells. I don't use it regularly, so I can't really say anything about it. Okay, now that we are at the end of this video, let me leave you with some final recommendations of which type of vitamin C to choose. This is kind of a recap of what you learned throughout the video. Generally, it always depends on what you want to achieve. If you want to slightly improve your overall vitamin C status and also get natural cofactors, then I would stick to whole food vitamin C supplements. If you want higher doses, you will need to go with synthetic products. But be aware of the downsides that I talked about, so the lowering of your ceruloplasmin and the copper depletion. If you can afford it, I would recommend liposomal buffered vitamin C, and it's also the form that I would use for short-term superdosing, for example, during a flu. If you have to watch your budget, on the other hand, then I would either go with plain ascorbic acid if you can tolerate it, or buffered ascorbate if you have stomach problems. I hope this overview and my advice helped you, and I see you in the next video.